This is 7 National News and Inner Top Story. The UAE Vice President, Prime Minister and Ruler of Dubai, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, has opened the 4th Arab Women Leadership Forum, the two-day conference, which is a flagship annual event that is organized by the Dubai Women Establishment DWE, is hosted under the guidance of Sheikh Manal bin Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, the President of Dubai Women Establishment and wife of Deputy Prime Minister and Minister Minister of Presidential Affairs, His Highness Sheikh Mansour bin Zayed Al Nahyan. The opening ceremony was attended by Dubai Crown Prince His Highness Sheikh Hamdan bin Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum and Dubai Deputy Ruler His Highness Sheikh Maktoum bin Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum. The aim of the forum is to identify factors that foster women's participation in the country's economic growth, outlining frameworks that encourage UAE women to take on higher roles in the local workforce and enhance the UAE's competitiveness on a global front. As patron of the forum, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum asserted that the UAE has always supported the empowerment of women and engaged them in the national development plans. His Highness further assessed, that the United Arab Emirates consider women as a fundamental pillar of the community and the cornerstone of family. Therefore, the government ranks the empowerment of women on top of its agenda, aiming to enable women to shoulder her social and professional responsibilities and partake in various aspects of work. Prior to the official opening ceremony, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed toured the competitiveness exhibition held on the sideline of the forum with support from the office of Her Highness Sheikh Manal bin Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum. His Highness Sheikh Mohammed was briefed on the sponsors' efforts in supporting competitiveness and the opportunities they offer for women. The much-awaited Sharjah International Book Fair SIBF kicked off earlier today. American best-selling author Dan Brown leads the long list of well-loved and renowned writers at this year's 10-day event. His Highness Sheikh Dr. Sultan bin Mohammed Al Qasimi, member of the Supreme Council and ruler of Sharjah, inaugurated the 33rd edition. In his speech, he spoke of the event's humble beginnings that has spanned over three decades and is currently ranked the fourth largest book fair in the world. He emphasized the important role that reading and knowledge plays in the promotion of peace and prosperity. He also honored literary figures as well as young and aspiring writers from the region and beyond for their outstanding contribution to the literary world. Among the special guests honored during the ceremony was one of Arab world's film, television, and stage giants, Adel Imam from Egypt. His Highness Sheikh Dr. Sultan also launched his new book at the event, titled Under the Banner of Occupation. We are um, participating uh, with a lot of uh, uh, stands. W one of the stands is uh, the Sharjah Islamic Cultural Capital stand, which involves the SESCO and also uh, Sharjah as the cultural capital. And through that stand, we were trying to uh, showcase what Sharjah has to offer and what other uh, um, cultural capitals ha has to offer as well. We are very lucky to be in, in the cultural capital of the Arab world and the Islamic world as well, uh, being uh, uh, the hub of the uh, uh, fourth largest uh, book fair in the world. We, we are very happy to be participating in this uh, big book fair. We're here to a very uh, nice word uh, delivered by His Highness Sheikh Dr. Stam bin Muhammad Qasimi. We can say that Sharjah started doing this since 1981. Now we are in 2014 and it's still going on. So we can say congratulations to His Highness Sheikh Dr. Sultan, congratulations to UAE, to all the buddhis living here. Uh, this exhibition is uh, in, the, in the category of international exhibition. Uh, they do take care of the childhood, uh, preparing a special box for them for different levels of age and for the family, for the uh, trade section. So we can say this is it's a university from all over the world, and people can meet, people can read, people can watch. 
1.4 million books will be on show at this year's SIBF, including a collection of rare books and manuscripts. In addition to the long list of celebrities and authors from across the globe, the 10-day event includes a host of industry seminars and children workshops, making it a cultural and educational family affair, as well as a platform for new writers to realize their dream. Last week, I have published my first book, uh, like the birthday, was started from uh, this uh, exhibition. So I love it uh, even when it started, I mean, when I was young, I was coming here visiting this exhibition. Uh, now I visit this exhibition with the uh, memory of a child where I mean to see the other child now growing up. So uh, we wish uh, the organizer, organizers all the best and inshallah next year to be here with a new activity. His Highness General Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan, the Crown Prince of Abu Dhabi and Deputy Supreme Commander of the UAE Armed Forces, has presided over a meeting of the Abu Dhabi Executive Council. The council members reviewed a report on government performance in major sectors and how effectively it was aligned with key performance indicators, with members stressing the importance of regular reviews of performance in government projects and services. Among other items reviewed during the meeting were the progress of work on 60 housing projects being implemented in different parts of the Emirate at a total cost of 60 billion dirhams. Work on the first phase of the Mima housing project is nearing completion, which will see 788 villas built in Al Dafra ranches, 60 villas in Bida, Matawa, and 20 villas in Al Yabana. Infrastructure work is also underway on 60,605 land plots in the Emirate and on 14,893 houses. The Council sanctioned the 400 kilowatt power transmission line between Baraka and Al Ruwais and the opening of the Al Silaa Al Shuwehat 2 line to link Baraka nuclear power plant. The 168 million dirham project is aimed at establishing a power link up and to supply power and to supply nuclear power. The plant becomes operational in 2017. The Federal National Council is to launch an inquiry into whether the law adequately protects women and children from violence in the home. The study will be carried out by the Human Rights Committee, which is the Council's newest internal body. It will examine all existing laws against domestic violence, the role of IWA centers, and the process of rehabilitating victims and training people to help them. The new investigation follows a request from nine Council members just before the summer recess. They said there had been a rise in domestic violence and an absence of legislation related to the violence women and children endured. The policy vacuum, they added, had led to a number of cases being removed from the jurisdiction of the courts and referred instead to family guidance. UAE-based parents consider academic record to be more important than the level of fees when deciding which school is best for their children, according to new research. The study into the attitudes of parents in the UAE has revealed that academic record, extracurricular activities, and technology outweigh the importance of fees and location. The YouGov Education Investment Study surveyed about 500 parents throughout the UAE to understand the key factors that impact a school's reputation. The study found that when evaluating schools, parents placed a school's academic record as the most important followed by its overall reputation, the range of subjects taught, the range of extracurricular activities on offer, and the school facilities available. Functional attributes such as the proximity of the school to home, ease of access, and school fees were deemed less important, suggesting that parents in the UAE are more willing to pay higher costs or travel further in order to place their child in a school with a strong academic record. Additionally, the survey found that 44% of parents believe they receive good value for money from their child's school, citing factors such as the quality of the class teacher, positive word-of-mouth recommendations, and the quality of the head teacher as attributes which contribute significantly to their perception of value for money. The full results, findings, and analysis of the study will be revealed to delegates of the Education Investment MENA conference, which takes place in Dubai next week. And surging growth and development in Abu Dhabi have almost doubled the population in eight years, according to figures from the Statistics Center Abu Dhabi. In mid-2005, 
there were 1,374,169 people in the Emirate. By the middle of last year, that figure had risen to 2,453,096, of whom 1,747,833 were male and 705,263 female. The annual rate of population growth over the eight years was 7.5%. Last year, about 1.5 million people lived in Abu Dhabi City, 650,000 in Al Ain and 300,000 in Al Garbiya, the western region. Of those, 495,368 were Emiratis and 1,957,728 expatriates, compared with 344,350 and 1,029,819 in 2005. Experts at the SCAD stated that the main reason for the high population growth was an influx of expatriate workers required to meet the Emirates' development needs. Besides the influx of expatriate workers, population growth was also affected by the fertility rate in Abu Dhabi. It is higher than in most of the developed world and mortality remains extremely low. Last year, there were 14.7 births per 1,000 population and 1.2 deaths per 1,000 population, compared with 1.8 deaths in 2005. And finally, in the bulletin, food lovers are in for a treat this weekend with the start of the Italian Cuisine World Summit taking place right here in Dubai. Running from the 7th of November until the 20th, the summit is returning to Dubai for its 6th edition, following the staggering success of the 2013 edition, which was the first in Dubai after four years in Hong Kong. This year's show will feature a full list of events, including the Piazza Grande Food Show, with music, entertainment, and food tastings. Competitions include Casinetto's Best Pizza in the UAE, the Best Espresso in the UAE, and the Risotto World Contest. This year's edition also introduced exciting new events such as a truffle auction for charity. Meanwhile, Michelin-starred chefs will also be cooking in some of Dubai's most upscale Italian restaurants. The selected restaurants altogether will host more than 40 Italian guest master chefs, bringing with them a deluge of Michelin stars. Unique gala nights will be organized in each of them. The master chefs will create special menus specifically for the summit and for discerning eaters. According to Rosario Scarpato, creator and current director, the summit is a golden opportunity to learn more about Italian cuisine and its amazing palette of tastes. The aim of the Italian Cuisine World Summit is just to uh, celebrate what is Italian cuisine, uh, the essence of Italian cuisine, the enjoyment of Italian cuisine, but at the same time to educate the, the, the customers uh, to, to the Italian cuisine. The summit is promoted by the best Italian restaurants in Dubai. And this is probably the most important thing, uh, thing to, to, to be uh, highlighted because uh, it's a common effort by all the restaurants uh, of the best, fine Italian restaurants in town. They we lost uh, for the period of the summit, which is from the 7th to the 20th of November, uh, some of the most important and prestigious uh, uh, guest chefs coming from Italy and all around the world. They are all Michelin star chefs. Uh, we are talking about 40 Michelin star uh, chefs, chefs coming here at the same time. It's probably the first time that uh, such a large number of chefs is coming to Dubai. And this is done uh, with a, a purpose. We believe that Dubai is positioned to be one of the world food capitals uh, in, of, the, the, of the near uh, future.